Welcome to Growlers and Gremlins podcast. This is your favorite guest host, second time, very spacey, very drunk, Victor. Um, and because I'm the host, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the other three because I feel like taking control over this one. Christ, turn him down. Um, we have... Uh, <laughs> I feel like taking control. Je- Christ, turn him down. <laughs> <laughs> He's so loud, my ears. Sounds like somebody else took oh, control. Oh, God. Well, it's because I was sharing a mic with Austin for a bit, and I think we needed to turn it up for a bit. I think uh, you also brought some enthusiasm to my right, video. To my right, I, yeah, I have drunk enthusiasm right now. To my right, I have Jonathan. I almost call him John because that's what you know him as. I know him as Jonathan, the tin we go way foil back. man. And then we have... I'm going to skip across the table to Jason, the <laughs> anal list, and Brian, the womanizer. Jason's is... kind of become our analyst and our therapist. He's our anal rapist. Anal rapist? Oh, yeah. Is anal I I rapist. Like... Anal rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, call my therapist that's an old uh, arrested development joke <laughs> <laughs> so, Siri, I need um, to call my therapist do you want to see the rapist for this week we have Hello, a Davis. mixed drink so not a straight uh, straight but we do have a uh, what we call a white trash margarita but we it, fancied it up yeah, a little it, bit it yes. means mixed drink is a very so loose ha- <laughs> covering term hey it, this is a special one this, this, this is a like staple signature drink. this is a staple in our friendship uh so it's it's diet mountain dew my mountain dew if you would like uh with tequila dealer's choice but this one we have el mayor no it's not dealer's choice the classic white trash margarita okay, is made okay. with salsa silver which is like the cheapest i'm trying tequila to keep it buy. open i'm trying to keep it Wouldn't open it be to, the, to the list but yeah we used a fancy good tequila for this one but we used el mayor uh handmade legacy they say uh over four generations we have been perfecting the art and craft of growing agave and distilling tequila we continue this day with the age-old process handed down through the generations, every sip represents this hard-earned legacy. Tell you what, it's fantastic. I can taste the it's legacy. It's good. Like, it's good. Even like white trashed up with some Diet Mountain Dew in it, it's good. Yes. Uh, and we have put it in our finest um, solo, solo cup. cups. Mm. Blue. Yes. Blue, because we're classy. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to use red solo cups. Well, this is we're a blue house, right? Billies. <laughs> no. It was a red hat. Are these actually solo? <laughs> oh, are they not even solo? That'd be fucking hilarious. No, they're probably like no, we off need to, brand. They're yes, probably we great have value. To, we have to hit every aspect of the white trash margarita. <laughs> off yeah, brand, off brand, off brand solo, solo cups. Cups. With my off brand bendy straws. Yes. <laughs> did you guys not grab straws? No. I didn't. No, I'm drinking you it without tell anyone else where they were. Oh, yeah. Red team. I also way. don't have ice. Oorah. I felt the I got ice. The chilled uh, diet Mountain Dew was enough. Yeah. So I brought a topic today. It's pretty general, uh, but I think there's enough here. So shadow people is my topic. Uh, this is this is pretty worldwide. So it's not it's not regional or anything, uh, and it's been going on pretty much as long as recorded history. So. Shadow people, I guess I'll start with a descriptor, and just bear in mind, I've had quite a bit to drink tonight, um, so I might stumble upon my words here. Um, so, most typically, shadow people are very dark. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> you want to try that they one again, are, champ? Who the very, fuck is that? They're very dark. Wow. They are very dark silhouettes, uh, but they are sometimes... Um, described as foggy and semi-transparent but they're most most typically very dark as in because they're typically seen in the dark but they're noticeably darker than the dark blacker than the blackest yes. night and so uh they're they're darker than their surroundings and they're 
um, you know, matching tall human figures, uh, typically described as likely male, but otherwise without gender. Um, they're also often described as having a bolero style hat, which is kind of like the Zorro hat. It's kind of a flat brim, almost like a cowboy style hat, but mm. kind of flat, um, or a hooded cloak. But it seems that the, you know, Zorro style hat is the most common. Um, they have no face most, most of the times. Uh, but they also seem to be staring at you. So even if they don't have a distinguishable face, it's like you can tell that they're staring right at you. Less common, though, some are also seen with eyes of varying colors. And it's said that each color seems to represent a certain type of shadow person. That's not well documented just yet, but the uh, white eyes has been the most consistently documented and they they say that these ones are considered faster more logical and more still which is a little weird because faster and more still seems a little contradictory co contradictory but the, whatever they're um, fast and they're very yes glidey. <laughs> they like on ice mm. so um some and by some, I mean very few, but some have described shadow people as watchers or protectors, but they are very much most often considered uh, dreadful, ominous, or evil, um, often foreshadowing something dark, typically death. Um, they're almost always silent, rarely talking, though a few accounts have claimed that if you are to look into their eyes or even into like their chest, I guess, or whatever, they can start to scream like shrieky static, loud winds or creaking wood. Black metal. Yeah. Um, so shadow people are frequently reported to arrive in the night, typically when one is falling asleep or awakening from a deep sleep. Um, and there are some, I, I would say, more often than not, it's kind of 50-50. There are shadow people where you see them kind of in the corner of your eye, in your peripherals, very briefly. You look, and they're gone. Or there are people who wake up and see a dark figure, very ominous, very um, you know, forbearing, and they stare at them, and they don't disappear. I like watching you sleep. And, yeah, essentially. <laughs> the night man cometh. Yes. Uh, you sit there, you call for the uh, day man, the day man doesn't arrive. <laughs> not until and at least 5 a.m. Not, not until he's ready to propose. <laughs> and, the champion of karate and friendship yes. for everyone. But the, the, <laughs> the night man uh, stares at you, <laughs> and it's, it's often paired with sleep paralysis. So, uh, so it's a paralysis demon? Not necessarily, well, but it's it, often it's paired sim with similar. sleep paralysis. Yes, so sleep paralysis, for those who may be unfamiliar, it's honestly exactly how the the sound the, the name sounds. Never open um, your eyes you, if you're you paralyzed. Can't, you, you're essentially, you feel awake, you're not it? technically, you're your, your technically body's still dreaming. Your body REM sleep. Yes, yes but, you... but you can't move. You yeah. feel like you can't move. Sometimes you feel like you can't breathe. You can't scream and call out to people. It's not that you feel like you um, can't move. It's that you actually can't move. Yes. Right. Your body is well, because, yeah. because, because of the way that your body go, your But brain... you're still in REM is what I'm saying. Yeah, when so you're you, in REM, you your body like, shuts down motor Because you feel like you're awake, but you can't move. And yes, in you know reality and actual you know timeline whatever yeah. you you can't actually physically move. it's it's that feeling like um, when you're on a, an operating table and you wake up halfway through and you start moving whatever they're working on yes and you're not really moving but it feels like i've never been on an operating table not since i was an infant oh uh, i woke up during my uh when my elbow i kind of came at it because they they didn't hit me hard enough so i kind of woke up and was just watching the tv screen which had the surgery on it. And I kept thinking my arm was up and moving around because I was like trying to grab him or something and be like, hey. I was put to sleep for the first time 
because I had that big titty on my knee. Oh, yeah. They put you in a out for that? I yes, figured that'd be local and aesthetic. It. I thought so too. They said it was going to be local, and then they, they were like, okay, this will put you to sleep. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought this was local. They're like, yeah, we're using that too. And then I was out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was so weird because I'd never been put out oh. before. They injected me. And I was like, oh, my God. And I felt it, like, closing in. And then I was out. In my, and the next that thing that I remember life, was waking up. Hey, Vic, out. It was so Is weird. that what it looked like? He has one. Big old Brian, Brian has a knee boob. Big Mine old. was bigger. Yeah, but doesn't that... It's squishy like yours was. Yes. Brian has but this look, lump have, on his knee. I have the scar now. Oh, that's I, cool. Yeah, because I You look like you had a knee replacement. Yeah, I love it. I had it removed. Yeah. I got a second kneecap now. Because it wasn't going away. I had it drained, and then it came back. And then I got it removed. It was bursitis, right? Yes. Yeah. Bursitis. I don't even know how I got it. Bursa. Damage to the... Well, no, I know it had... Bursa. It was traumatic, but I yeah. don't I don't remember what exactly it was. But You, you probably squatted too much. Well, something. that's what I thought, like, too, but apparently it has to be like a physical, like... You probably dropped to a knee trauma one too many times. to the knee. Yeah, yeah you probably dropped to a knee too much. Oh, uh, that's probably right, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, shadow people. Um, so with sleep paralysis, there there's actually one particular one that a lot of um, people who experience sleep paralysis cite, which I guess has been given the name night hag. Yes. Is that the one that sits Dude, on you? Yes. And you the night hag is terrifying, yes. man. So she's described as a dark, disturbing, silhouetted woman who crouches on your torso, yeah. stares into your eyes, and says, got any cigarettes? No. That's, that's what night hags say. <laughs> but, <laughs> she doesn't say that. No, she pushes down on your chest, making it hard to move or breathe, which is kind of, you know... Irrelevant since you're, you're already... You're too animal. close to Detroit, man. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night, and someone's on your chest going, got any cigarettes? <laughs> I need some new parts. Um, but yeah, no, the night hag is probably the most frequently cited, you know, common... Yeah. I always assumed that um, was the uh, your mind panicking as to why you couldn't move. Well, that's, that's because your breathing is still regulated even though you're awake. That's so. what I thought as an explanation yeah. for shadow people. For the people who experience shadow people during sleep paralysis, it's probably your mind's explanation for what is going on. Yeah, I hate the idea that it's a big cloaked figure that you can see. That's why I always stuck with if I get it, I'm not opening my eyes. Yeah. Um. And and there have been stories too where it's like if you ignore them, they'll they'll go away. But sometimes people have cited trying to ignore them and turning away, but feeling like even turning worse. They're still watching. Because, yes, because you're turning away like and you're more this. vulnerable. <laughs> I'm um, such bad. How do you turn away like if my got... eyes are watering? Because yeah. like, I've had this experience. Actually, the last... Not sleep paralysis, yeah. though. Like, I've never had sleep paralysis, but I haven't it sounds either. absolutely My, my sister terrifying. actually has it. I have night terrors. My but... sister has Which sleep one? paralysis. Which one? Older, second, or youngest? Younger? Youngest, She has really? sleep paralysis. Interesting. They say the night terrors had me pointing a forty-five at my bedroom door for about half an hour. Yeah, that's you rough. You fud. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I Never do... said what kind. Dick. <laughs> I do have uh, some... So there is actually a... Got a point there. There's a site about shadow people where they take stories about experiences. And this has been going on since like 2001, 2002. And there are actually people who are still doing, you know, I, I, I found some early ones that were from 2021. I think March was the latest that I found. Um, but I have some stories about uh, some interesting shadow people encounters, but I didn't know if you guys wanted to kind of give thoughts before I went into them, or if you wanted to hear the stories and then give your thoughts. Um, I'm going to say the, uh, I have a lot of thoughts. The, well, then let's talk about your thoughts because the stories are less important than your thoughts. Okay. Their well, thoughts don't matter. Well, Brian was no. getting ready to say something. No, the, the peripheral thing I think is true to an extent. I mean, I, again, it's like, you can't confirm cause it's always out of your peripheral, but you have there's so many things where it's like somebody's like I saw something in that corner of my or you're like if you're working on something and then suddenly you just get movement off your like right or left side and you suddenly you whip around real fast yeah it's like and what did you say Jonathan I saw the peripherals oh dude okay like this whole episode this whole topic just gives me goosebumps because like I already this know. one for me is also relatable because I've had so many of these different experiences like this and like 
I'm not a big like I've had paranormal experiences yeah. type person, but like <laughs> like okay, peripherals. Uh there was someone talking years ago on Coast to Coast about the mm-hmm. idea that what you can see sometimes in your peripheral vision is you glimpsing into another dimension and when you actually focus on it, you're unable to see into that other dimension. And so, like, you're catching a glimpse of something else. Something is there, but not in your perceivable dimension. One time I saw this thing in my peripherals that was like, and this sounds so goofy, but, like, if I was an artist, if I could draw you a picture of this, it would be so creepy to you. But, like, the best way I can describe it is similar to Dobby the house elf. But more... Well, you've okay. seen that footage of the Dobby house elf that I sent yes. you. Yes. And that's, that's enough to give me goosebumps. That's, that's creepy. fucking creepy as hell. So this, and not necessarily in the look, but in the size and in the the clothing. And you're talking about something... the Harry Potter character, right? Yes. Like just the like a description so, for, yeah. Yeah, so what I'm saying, not necessarily the look, but the size and the way it was dressed. Like mm. wearing essentially what looks to be a pillowcase, but it was red. And... Basically, was about the size of Dobby the Hell Self, had the frame of a child, but had a very large head and like normal sized but sharpened teeth and very large eyes. And I just saw it in my peripherals once. And I was like, that was weird, you know? Yeah. But then I started to have dreams about it. And this was like when I was probably 17. You know, this was at an age where I was like, I'm not really into that kind of stuff and i had some dreams about it where i kept seeing these things in my dreams and i was like what is going on you know and i think it had to do with the little attic doors that were in my parents house they have attics that were not above the top floor but parallel to it so there'd be these little doors you could go into yeah i've seen those and before. like i don't know i think that got in my head but and then on like shadow people i've told the story before and I believe the demonic oppression episode about the thing that I saw as a very young child, like in my dreams and stuff that I never thought much of it until, and I kind of forgotten about it until I was listening to a podcast called real, real ghost stories online and a girl, they, what they do is they have people call in and they tell stories that happen to them and a girl told a story about seeing this thing as a child and she was around my age. So this is around the same time period that I had seen this thing. And she told this story about seeing this thing. And like, as she's describing it, I like, I knew what she was going to say next in the description because she was describing the exact thing that I had seen. And it was like a shadow person type thing, a two dimensional silhouette figure that was very specific because of the details of its head in that it didn't have a hat or anything but appeared to have horns that were not quite horns but more like a shaping of the head that was almost like if you took Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty and like trimmed her horns off to little points like without the curl but where like the head is mm-hmm. split there's like an angle on the head and then there's like this and kind of like and a simpsons character in that like the hair is attached to the head it's yeah. like it's like the same thing that type of thing and it was like pitch black and like she described it and like i almost had to stop everything i was doing because i was like i have never heard anyone else describe this thing and she described it like exactly the way i had seen it as a kid and that just like I got goosebumps so bad. My eyes were watering. I was like, this is freaking me out like on another level. And I like immediately, I had to tell everybody about it. I drew a picture of it. I was like, have you ever seen this? Like, yeah. It freaked me out so much that, uh, you know, that's the closest thing I've ever seen to like a shadow person, but it is like so deep ingrained in me from like a small child, like these nightmares I'd have of this thing that hearing someone else describe it was just the scariest thing to me because it's like, Maybe they weren't just little kid nightmares. Maybe there's yeah. some kind of thing. It like legitimizes it. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, cause it was just such a specific description that I was like, what are the odds, you know, that someone yeah. else as a young child saw exactly the same thing? It's weird. 
And that's one account that you randomly heard. Yeah, there just could be totally multiple. at random listening yes. to a random episode of a podcast that I was new to just happened to hear this story of this girl who's telling what she saw as a child and it exactly matched the description there of something I saw. There could be plenty more that saw that. Yeah, but who knows? Yeah, there could have been a lot of a lot of people that heard that episode and they were like, I saw the same thing, you know, but she's the only one that called a ghost story podcast about it. So like shadow people freak me out, man. Right. <laughs> like, the whole idea of it just freaks me out. I don't even have any explanation for what it could be. But... Yeah. Were you going to say something, Jason? Yeah. So my childhood experience, this would have been the summer before my fourth grade year, we moved to a new house. And in this new house, you to get to the basement, you had a flight of stairs, a landing, and then like three more stairs, and you mm -hmm. were in the basement. So it was a 90 degree yeah, turn. Yeah, so it was a 90, you, 90 degree turn to the left. And then at that point, you are in like basically the middle of the basement. It is equidistant between the front of the house and the back of the house, right? So you're just like in the middle of this lane. And the lighting, like we hadn't, we just moved in, we hadn't done much with the lighting, and it was just a... a Row of lights down the middle to the other side of the basement. And at the other side of the basement was the laundry room. Um, but the light was just enough that you could see the path to the laundry room. But the edges of the basement were still in shadow. And because we had just moved in, it was still full of boxes at this point. And I was sent down to like change laundry, like move, to move it to like the dryer or something. And I just get down in the basement, I could do the laundry. And I just get this overwhelming fire flight sense, right? That there is something else in the basement with me. Oh, that's creepy. And out of the corner of my eye, moving across the top of the boxes, I, I described it as a large cat, like not like large house cat, but like Jaguar kind of shape, like chased me through the basement across the top of the boxes and i just like uh, from that point on uh, i like always you were running i and ran was, like... through the basement and like i leaped up to the i, I skipped the steps and leaped up to the landing and then just shot up the stairs because like this shadow like cat like figure just chased oh, me through God. the basement across the top of the boxes That's terrifying i think this is legitimately the first paranormal experience i've ever heard from you and like, well, because I always just kind of discounted it as yeah. childhood. Like that was the first time this, I lived in a house with a basement. In that's my interesting too, though. because that's an animalistic. Yeah, like that's an animal shadow. Like that's yeah. well, well, and it's also an animalistic urge. The way your fight or flight kicks in. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, it was full adrenaline. Like fully flushed. Like I felt it again now, retelling it. Yeah. Of and probably a little warm from the tequila, but like it was just kind of like just all of a sudden like overwhelming something's watching me yeah and then like out of the corner of my eye like i see it on top of the boxes and i run as fast so, as i can one of the things about shadow people is that like in my experience like anyone you talk to about it they just instinctively get freaked out by it and i don't think it's more like a fear of the unknown but it, that i feel like everyone has had some sort of experience with like just something weird mm -hmm. you know and like yeah, I think about I was going to talk about this in an episode in the past, but never got around to it that there was this, there's this guy who he does lectures on like sixth senses. I can't remember his name, but he says that, you know, there are three main six senses, clairvoyance, clairaudience and clairsentience. And he says that every person in the world has one of them. And you know you can determine what it is you have and once you realize it it will kind of be amplified you can learn to use it and what you know if you really look into it you know clairvoyance is the ability to like see or communicate with you know spirits and things like that clairaudience is the ability to hear things and like from the other side or whatever and clairsentience is an instinctive ability to feel feelings of like you could walk into a house and just know there's a presence there. you just feel dread yeah you know that there's something there and i feel like that's probably the most common one and yeah. like if you were to say like 
if you had to pick one that you have, like for me, I would say it's definitely clear sentience. And I would guess for Jason as well, given that experience where you can go into a place and you just get that gut feeling of wrongness, you know? And like some people don't get that. Mm -hmm. Some people do. And it's, yeah, that's interesting. Cause I don't think I've discovered mine. And you said that you feel that everyone's had an experience with a shadow person. And I don't, necessarily i can't pinpoint yeah. anyone that i've had it's just Maybe i'm not I saying have. everyone but sure. a lot of people i talk and, to and about to a fair, subject like that like it yeah. generally just freaks people and to out be like fair, on an animal maybe level i like, haven't no. yeah maybe it's more of a i haven't yet versus i never will mm -hmm. um but one that kind of maybe you have clear audience and you've heard things that you didn't even realize or, sure yeah I don't know. um but that's one of those things because you also said like once you realize it it's amplified yeah I, this is one of those things that I always like I always go into it with a mind of skept, uh, skepticism mm. and so I, I I don't really like pay attention to it and I'm almost like scared to pay attention yeah. to it because it's like once I amplify it am I really gonna want to you amplify into the it abyss, yeah. the abyss stares back exactly like. um but one that pops out to me because um it's it's one that I never really thought of and I always kind of like it, this isn't a personal experience this, this is a sibling my youngest sibling mm -hmm. um, that you're familiar yeah, with I, I've, I've had talks um, with her about things like this yes. before like years and years ago there was one and maybe she talked to you about this because this maybe. is one that she kind of brought up um, I remember so when we lived in um, nondescript house yeah um, oh. nondescript house very near my, here <laughs> Wait, how did that happen? Uh, tighten the side bolt. Yeah. A little bit. Um, but when we lived where you lived for middle school. Oh, you know what yeah. I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Um, we were very young. This was mm -hmm. like, because I moved and started third grade. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this was a little bit before we moved. So I may have been like first grade. She would have been like kindergarten, preschool, depending on when it happened. Um, but we had a house that was relatively old and I had a, a, a grandma who would always say she had like a, <clears throat> a ghost that followed her. It's kind of mm -hmm. a joke, but she always thought she had one. Um, so we kind of played things off in the house. Uh, but there was one particular thing. Um, my youngest sibling, I, I had my own room. It was a two, it was a three bedroom house and I had, I grew up with two siblings, two girls. So they shared a room. I had my own room. And my youngest sibling would always come into my room because she was always scared for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Even though she shared a room, she would always come to my room. Mm -hmm. And I think it was in my room that she said she was awake and she saw, like, profile silhouettes of, like, caricature cartoony faces mm -hmm. laughing. I don't like that. Um, and she said it was like they were laughing at her. For some reason. Mm -hmm. You're a scared little um, girl. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it is crazy. I'm a scared little boy. Yeah, no kidding. Like, it kind of gives me goosebumps reliving it, like, the way she described I, it. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah. It was weird, because, like, because I was there, but I was asleep. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't experience it, but she said it was, like, and it was, like, multiple, which was really weird, because it was, I want to say, like, three, mm -hmm. maybe. But it was like almost like the Mardi Gras masks. Yeah, sort of it was thing, like, but, a silhouette. but it was like profile too. Ew. And it was like the like long, laughing, the wide mouth, like uh -huh. mouths, exaggeratedly and long it's, mouths. It's like too. it's so weird. Like the way she would describe it, she was like, it just felt so real. Um, and I, I don't know. I always chalked it up because we. I also had like a tree that was mm -hmm. like right out my window. I was like, oh, you probably you know just saw like tree shadows or something I, I think about that but it's just so weird because she always stuck with the fact that it was laughing profile like caricature type faces which is like and the most just, taunting thing it's you can weird do. yeah you know, i think about that stuff like a lot like this is kind of turning into the personal paranormal experiences episode but well like i always discounted mine as you know fear the dark because mm -hmm. once you know the boxes were unpacked and the basement was remodeled and you know better lighting put in hmm. it never happened again yeah right you know but it, until that stage it was always a frightful thing to be in the basement but or those changes in the home established it as your home and drove the spirit out who knows, yeah, who knows? you know but i for me I, approaching it logically it's like oh yeah you know, my kid and afraid of the dark okay whatever i think about uh like that whole thing i said about clairvoyance clairaudience clairsentience 
and I think about how, you know, if it's different from every person, things could be different even in a family, how, you know, say your sibling saw something, but maybe you don't see things, and, you know, like, maybe you hear things, maybe you feel mm -hmm. things you don't know yet, but, like, I think back to, like, uh, even my dad, who's not a person who's really into the paranormal at all has held to this day that he has this story where when he was a kid he was about 12 years old at the time he was staying the night at his cousin's house and they woke up to pounding at the door of the front door of the house and he, they looked out the window and he saw a woman running from door to door pounding on everyone's door and she was covered in blood and what had happened that night was that a woman down the street had shot herself in the stomach with a shotgun and died in her bedroom. Uh. But he saw her running door to door, pounding on doors, screaming for help. And it woke everyone in the house up. Everyone heard the knocks on the door. And he saw her, and he swears to this day that that's a true story. And he's not a guy who's into that kind of stuff, you know. And I feel like at this point in my life, if it was a lie to tell me when I was a kid, he would have told me by now that, like, that story's not true. Yeah. So, like, maybe clairvoyance, the ability to see things and things like that. And then, like, my sister, one of them years ago, this was, oh, she had to have been probably eight years old at the time i remember just screaming in the house because she saw a man's face in her bedroom window but it was on the second floor and like she saw a man looking in her window but like no one brought a ladder to the house to be a peeping tom creep was it like, your younger one again? no one of the older ones mm. And uh, I remember that night, just like it was a big deal, like trying to <laughs> figure out what was going on. But yeah. yeah, she saw a face looking in her window at night, like clearly saw it. And it wasn't just like, oh, I thought I saw something like she saw a man's face looking in at her your, window at the current house. No, this was at a previous house in another mm. town. And uh, I think about that. And I'm like, well, maybe she can see things, but like has never thought about it much or pursued it much but like and I feel like that's a hard thing to really develop or look into is it's like oh I saw this thing once I'll discount it as I get older but when when it's like something like clairsentience where you feel things it's like it's hard to ignore where you feel like you could walk into any place and you could very clearly state like this place is haunted or this place is not, you know, like yeah. you feel presences and you know, that's like I said, with like Jason's thing, that was more of a feeling rather than a sighting in See, that that's the you could feel that fight or flight immediately and like the need to run away. Right. Rather than like, Oh, I saw a thing and it scared me. And it was also it's, in your peripheral, right? Kind of. Well, because, because I was running, and it was running alongside me yes, on top of the boxes. Because mm -hmm. that's an interesting take that you yeah. mentioned the three, like, six senses and that like, everyone has. Yeah. Because anyone can see something in their peripherals. Yes, anyone. But not everyone can see directly, directly look at it. And, and that's kind it. of yeah. And that's kind of how um, shadow people accounts are. A lot of people say once you look at it, it kind of vanishes. Yes. But there are a few people who say you look at it and it literally just stares right back at mm -hmm. you. So that's kind of interesting because maybe those few people are the mm -hmm. people who have the clear, um, clear, which, clear clairvoyance. Would yes. Be, yeah. And like, that's when, like I talked about in the demonic oppression episode about like the time period in my life where I could feel a presence following me. And it's like, that was real to me. Like I could feel something there and it's easy as an adult to be like, ah, you know, I was just a kid going through, you know, whatever crap and all that. But it's like at the same time, I feel like I've always been able to like feel if there's like a presence somewhere. And so maybe it is that maybe sure. it's clairsentience. And I have a feeling that and... I, I might be a little, if I had to guess, cause again, I've never really like 
tried to look into it, I would probably be clairsentient. I would think that would be the most common of all of them yeah. because it's almost like an animal animal and spiritual instinct at the same time. Yeah. Like if we have a soul, our soul has like a radar, you know, to and like I also detect feel, evil. And I also feel like naturally speaking, I'm a bit of an empath. Yeah. Um so I feel like that's probably that, that's a, a, a common thing for yes. uh, clairsentience. So I would feel like that's probably what I'm more inclined to be. Um, but Brian, do you have any experiences? I don't. That's why I haven't been. Brian has night terrors. Let's go into that. No, I've had a couple. I don't remember them. There is nothing. Were well, they like sleep the paralysis type nightmares? No, like wake up fully alert, adrenaline rushing and ready to react. Night terrors. Like screaming. But like, a, but like then calm down and realize it's like a night terror. Yeah, after um, about half an hour, when my brain finally catches up and is unfried. Brian, at like 27 years old, waking up in his bed going, Mom! <laughs> no. I've never Wait, screamed from okay, a night terror. Mind. It's been the very, very hard jolt awake, mm -hmm. and then lights on. That could be sleep apnea as well. No. I've had, I know what sleep apnea does when you wake up. My dad has it. I do not have it. I've had experiences before where I think it's sleep apnea, just like the weight of my chest weighing down on me while I'm sleeping. But like, I'll wake up in the, the middle of the hack. night on a rare occasion. Like, I'll be woken up by my inhale because mm. what will happen is I'll be asleep and then just suddenly... Do you have sleep apnea? I have no idea. I never read a sleep oh. study, but um, yeah, I, I'll I wake up in the middle of the night on a rare occasion to like... <laughs> like a really hard suck in of air yeah. like as if my body wasn't breathing the and it needs the air, to get you. you know and uh that's that's a scary way to wake up yeah, yeah. but like i think it's just like for whatever reason i stopped breathing in my sleep and then my body was like oh no yeah <laughs> you know no i that's a weird mine feeling have always been <clears throat> you know i don't know if you guys ever had the when you get a falling dream and you impact the ground and you wake up and you're pretty much jumping off your bed i don't think i've ever hit the ground in a falling dream that's well i i don't know if i've hit the ground but that's when i usually wake up right that's when i jump out of my yeah. bed and like i'm like i feel like i assume that when the dream happens it's like i hit the ground so my body feels the cushion and then me freaking the fuck out mm -hmm. is the jump back up that i get yeah the so my night terrors usually just i'm jolted hard and i'm jolted fast there's a and I got like a double serum of adrenaline going and it's just everything's on until my either my heart rate is back to normal or the crazed whatever. I mean, they're, the one where I pointed the 45 at the wall or the door for half an hour, I didn't get up mm -hmm. out of my bed. I had a phone flashlight aimed at the door ready to go because I was too scared to get out of my bed at that point. Another thing about all of that and like the sleeping and the whole instinctive feelings of fear and like shadow people feeling very oh, evil and ominous and things like that i think also has to do with just like an animal instinct we have that for example maybe i'm the only one but i imagine everybody has this and I've, i haven't really brought this up with people before but okay so when you're sleeping if you have your bed near a wall you tend to want to fall asleep with your back facing the wall rather than the open room. Or if you're sleeping with another um, person, you tend to want your back facing the person rather than the open room. It's almost like a survival instinct. You don't want your back exposed I'm 100% in your sleep. The same, yeah. You don't want to fall asleep with your feet or hands outside the blanket. You exactly. Know what I mean, dude, I actually do this thing because you're like, if I fall I... asleep with my hands outside no. the blanket, my fingers are going to get caught yes. off, cut off. <laughs> There's this thing I do with the blanket. Actually, it's very weird, um, but maybe everyone does it. Um, where I like pick my legs up so that the blanket will tuck under my feet, that. and mm -hmm. then I put my feet down. So yeah. it's like actually tucked under my so feet so that no one could reach under and yes, grab them in your sleep yes. it's like a subconscious thing and i feel like it's a, like a carryover from our survival instincts back like it's, you know before a, civilization that yeah you know you don't want your back exposed while you're sleeping you don't want appendages exposed one of the you know? worst feelings is having my feet out if i wake up with mm -hmm. my foot out i immediately cover it and with see, a blanket for me that's changed because i've i've grown into the habit recently of sleeping without blankets Oh, I can't do that. Uh, it's too hot. It's wonderful. 
No. Oh, I, can't, say, I cannot do that. Because the best part about it is when you wake up cold in the middle of the night and pull a blanket over you and you're like, mm, and you fall back yeah. asleep. <laughs> I'll say, I know I do the foot thing too, but that's just because I only sleep with a comforter. There's no other. It's a, there's yeah, a, there's I only a sleep bed with sheet. Comforter too. And just comforter. There's no other sheet on my bed. And I'll do that just so I don't have the weight of the going over the side of my bed mm-hmm. on my toes because I sleep on my back laying down. This may be a common experience that everyone has, but like the learning curve to sleeping, or maybe I'm just autistic, but (laughs) I have like distinct memories of at night going to my parents' room because I couldn't sleep because I told my mom, I don't know what to do with my hands. (laughs) (laughs) That's you. Oh, dude. Actually, when you mention a hand thing, this, I, I, I chalk it up to just a very detailed dream that felt super real, but it was so fucking crazy. Um... Same house that my yeah. younger sister, same bedroom, obviously, because um, it was my bedroom. That was an older house. Too. It was an older yeah. house, yes. Like probably um, 1960s or so. Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Just given the yeah. layout of the neighborhood and the yeah, build of the Yeah, and maybe houses. even a tiny bit older, even. Yeah. Um, but I, I had my hands under my pillow. I was laying on my stomach, had my hands under my pillow, kind of head to the side. Um, and my hands were like at the edge of the mattress, kind of over Ooh. against the wall. And I swear, oh, don't was, ever have your hands off the bed I, I was, when you're no, sleeping. I was asleep, That's like the I, number one. I rule. was asleep. I was asleep. I had my hands under my head, but as I was asleep, obviously it somehow found its way against the Ooh. wall. And it was, I swear, it felt so real. I had, the, give me your hand. Like, put your hands out, both of them. I had the feeling this of someone. So I, weird. I had the feeling of someone just doing Ooh, that. I swear to God, just that feels just, weird having you do that just, when I can see you. I don't like that brushing, feeling of having someone just brush brushing across my, my hands. hands. Yes, I woke up to someone brushing and across they were my hands. The wall. Yes, that's creepy. Yes, and nobody was there because, like I said, my younger sister it was probably would sometimes, your hands like slipping out of the space between the wall and the mattress. It could have been, but nobody was there obviously because mm. I, I woke up and my my younger sister, who tended to kind of come into my room in the middle of the night, was not there. Um, and it woke me up, and I I just remember kind of having my just this feeling of like, Oh my God. And then I like, I couldn't even move. Cause I was like, that felt so real. And mm-hmm. I have no idea what the hell just happened. And every, ever since then I kind of, it was funny because ever since then I would like tuck my hands into my pillowcase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of I having them under the pillow, I would like tuck my hand into the pillowcase. It's, uh, no, that's why like, I say it's like a carryover from like survival instincts so, from like, it was pre-civilization so that like we're very careful about the way we sleep oh, oh god it was crazy um worried about predators oh yeah no. that's not really a shadow person experience but that no, was like a very like real feeling it all like, kind of ties together could have been a detailed dream but like i just remember it was the weirdest feeling uh hmm. but i do have I don't know. Do you want me to read some of these experiences? Okay, so I got one thing. Just a I stupid little Jason and for Brian, Brian both have something to say. Yeah, well, no, it. it's just go. about the sleeping habits that I had. And uh, I just know because for 17 years, I slept on a twin bed that had a wooden frame on it. And that wooden frame came above the end of the bed. So I had to learn to dang. I had to dangle my ankles out over the wood past oh, the end God, by about no. that far. Mm, no. And I couldn't handle that frame yeah. pressing into I, my legs all night. I had no choice. I was so long for that bed. Curl just, up. I couldn't. I would always be straight and I would always kill. So I had, I got, I padded it at the end, but I did have the occasional, like, I'm laying there and all of a sudden it's like, I'm not wearing socks. Don't think about it too hard. Don't they just... Oh, yeah, your toes are going to get snipped off, man. Oh. No, it, I, it would feel... <laughs> Dude, that's what, like, like my thoughts. No, I would be laying there, and it's like, okay, the comforter is up near my knees because I kicked it again. Something is touching me, and it's not the cat because my feet are hanging off, and it's just one of those, like, just don't think about it for a minute. And I wouldn't... I think it was just the numbing of my legs being over the bed, and it was just the tingles for waking up and feeling it, and that's what woke me up and would have me bring it back, but it always felt weird. Uh, when it would just numb. How do you not move your feet? I any, would. Any but touch I would that all... I have 
against my feet. I oh. feel most I exposed I'm by my them up feet. To my yes. butt, you know. I don't no, know. because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my feet are I, gonna hit my butt so fast. I don't know why, my, but I feel most exposed if my feet are out. <laughs> I can't comfortably lay in any other way, but just flat on my back. I can't lay on my side because if I lay on my side, are you Dracula? Have... No. Yes. What? Yes. My problem is I can't lay on my side because my shoulders are too broad, yeah, and it takes I like that. three pillows to well, put my head at a decent yeah. level. Yeah, and because you, I'm like this. That's fair. You if you're get a one large person pillows. and you lay on your side, your arms fall asleep. You got to so get one of those cube too. pillows. They invented cube yeah. pillows that are like well, a cube. That, but I, just... I can't stay like that. Mm -hmm. I will not fall asleep on my side. I always have to roll back flat, whether it's on my face or on my. I always fall asleep on my side. But I also can't fall asleep on my face. Because I end up burying my face in the pillow and suffocating myself sleeper. like an idiot. I'm sometimes. So it's like no matter what I did, it's like I would tuck my feet up under and like get them above and kind of. Like, but it, it would always just back full extension over the end. Oh god! And it was just like uh, it's just the tingles. Fuck it. I'll just pull them up for a minute, get the feeling back, and then try to just like scoot up. I had a wooden headboard at the front that stuck out. You got to sleep diagonally. I couldn't like across it was a, the dude, bed. Dude, that diagonally. twin bed wouldn't do that. Yeah, because there was it was a bunk bed that was just cut up. It had two posts at the end at each corner <laughs> that stuck up about six inches. I couldn't po I couldn't sleep diagonally. Jason, what's your experience that you were gonna say? So maybe not an experience, but whatever you're gonna say. Well, first his question about like if there's a wall, do you sleep against the wall? Mm -hmm. I always like cram myself against the wall. Yep, because well, the wall just, was cold. Yeah. And it was like I think it's I'm always more than that, man. It's like natural well, no, I, safety. Well, I'm always like extremely warm in bed. Me too. Yeah, so but you could also thing. You could also cozy sensation. up against the wall facing it, and it'd still be cool. Well, I mean, that's that's a, yeah, a natural that instinct that we have back from mm -hmm. our. Cave man, man days, yeah. Where yeah, but I'm saying I think it's not necessarily my no, back. It's not even your back. It's you sleep furthest away from the entry to wherever you are facing it so that if something does enter it and you can wake up you will be able to get up and get react. to your feet no. before it can get over to you so for me i would cram like as much as myself as i could between the mattress and the wall yeah so like i would have like an arm and a leg between the mattress and the wall well that's just a comfort yeah, thing i would do that some people like, like to leave it hanging my, back when my bed no was against ever the since wall. my experience with that i just mentioned i don't let anything fall between the wall and the mattress well it won't if your back is out. to the wall just get a bed spring. Put it no, I'm saying like the hand. Oh, well, like yeah. I don't let anything fall between the wall and the mattress now after that because mm -hmm. that was so weird. But when I was married, I always slept on the side of the bed closest to the door. Yes, so I do too. If, so that if something happens in the house, I can go do yeah. something about it. Yeah, S standard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no. Um. So when I, both my son and I had night terrors when we were very young. Okay. And, like, I remember one extremely vividly. Okay. To where, what it was, like, it was kind of like this, like, demented circus slash Mad Max kind of situation mm -hmm. going on. This was so, yours uh, or this was one that you shared? Mine. This was mine. Oh, okay. So a Tim Burton movie. Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, and I, it's like, you know, details, details, details. But basically, but the, the punchline was that, like, this clown came out and it's like this giant like fluffy hair and it just rips its head off and throws it at me mm -hmm. at the exact moment that our house or, or, my, or my childhood cat jumped on me Ooh. oh my god <laughs> cats are evil but i woke up and i was like well, terrified flung the cat well I, I, cat fucked off i don't know <laughs> but i there was this sensation that i wanted to scream to get my parents attention but I couldn't get any sound to Sleep come out. paralysis, you woke up in REM because your cat jumped on you. <laughs> well, no. Like, you woke up too fast, you think? I, I, I don't know. But like, I physically feel, you weren't like, there, but mentally like you I, were? Like, I was trying to force out a scream, but it was just kind of extremely strained. Have you and guys, no sound would come kind out. Of, kind of, like, airy. Have you guys mm -hmm. ever punched anyone in a dream? Yes. No. yes. What's it's it feel like? very slow. No, well, okay. Let me, let me requ re 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 recontextualize. I punched someone in a dream and hit someone in real life. Your wife. Okay. Oh, like, but, it, no, like in um, your yes. dream, you punch someone, though, but you hit someone the, next to you in real life. The feeling of punching okay. someone in a dream. What does it feel like? Like punching sand. 
Well, I, right? Yeah. It feels like a slow, soft thing that has no effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's the same with running. Well, you, no, you see, I didn't know if that was like a dream thing or like something psychological of like or a almost feeling of physical. weakness or something. Almost you know something. I mean? It could be physical too, because I've had dreams. <laughs> this sounds so oh. dumb. But I, I think I get what you're going to say is the idea that it's trying to slow down the impulse so that you swing. don't do it in, in real life. Potentially, but also like mm -hmm. I've had this thing too where it's like I've had dreams where I guess to describe it um, because it's a little easier to describe it if I'm actually describing my dream where I'm like playing football like in high school because that's what I would do yeah. um, playing football I, I was a wide receiver in football but my dreams I would be going and my arms literally wouldn't work like somebody would throw me the football and I couldn't raise my arms to catch it yeah yeah the, the powerlessness that yes. you feel in dreams yeah but there were times where I would wake up because I don't know like the football would smack me in the face or something um, and I would wake up and realize I was laying on both of my arms and they were asleep and yep. I almost wonder if it's because like that connection, it but it's like, it, it, I don't know. Cause it, it, it's weird because so much of your dreams are connected to physical reality, mm -hmm. but also like your dreams conception of what that, like what I, you're feeling. I had a dream that says a thousand words once I, uh, had a dream that I was doing something and I accidentally like halfway cut my arm off with a chainsaw and I was like, oh, no, and my dad was with me, and he's like, we got to get to the hospital. You drive. <laughs> and, like, tossed me keys in the dream, like, vividly. My half-cut-off arm was, like, flopping across the steering wheel to try to turn, and I'm like, why are you not driving? <laughs> and then I woke up, and it was because I had fallen asleep on my arm, and it was totally yeah. numb. Like, yeah. Dude, I've had that where I wake up and I turn over and I and lift arm my arm and later. it smacks me in the face because I can't actually <laughs> lift it. And I'm like, oh my God, my That's arm's not working. Almost a nightly thing for me. Oh, like my so arms weird. fall asleep it's the while worst I'm sleeping because I'll be laying on one of them and then I like roll over and my arm just like comes comes with when it can because <laughs> it kind of slunks over because <laughs> yeah, there's no moving it so i won't get into all my sleep issues because i have a lot you do but, um, <laughs> hey sleep issues is really turning out to be what this episode's about we'll get back to the so sleep paralysis is a bit is a well, big yeah, part and shadow of it. people is a big part of like sleeping and yeah see i used to and i, I it's more rare I got rarer as i got older but i used to have a very unusual experience falling asleep where it was kind of like I was moving through a tunnel of color and it would I would have this sensation of like space distorting mm -hmm. to where like if physically it felt like my feet and my head were just inches apart. Mm. Like I you know, cause you get, you know, you have a sense I, of where I your feet are. What, yeah, I get you have what a sense you're of where saying. Your head is, yeah. But, it's all it's almost a combination of the weightlessness right before you fall asleep in that your body kind of goes away and, mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's just kind of like a lucid dreaming thing uh, i used to be able to like it was like the sensation of like not only having control but flying through environments i already knew so like you know flying through the elementary school flying through the high school and it wasn't like you know like superman flight was kind of like the vision you know how he flies yeah. upright everywhere. Yeah, but it was like, and I it was like complete control. Like I can move around these environments, but it was no we only environments I already knew. Yeah. So I don't know, like if that's like I've a vivid had, dream. I've had similar dreams. It's yeah. weird because I can't really call them lucid dreams because I'm, for whatever reason, not fully aware that I'm dreaming and that I have complete control. But I also recognize that it's not reality. It's it's weird. It's like this in between. Cause like I don't man. I can almost feel like I can do anything, but if I focus too hard on it, like there, I've had dreams where I'm like, oh, I know I can fly, and I like try to. <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah, know I no, can do like this. That's, that's, well, like, no, it, yeah, like that's it exactly. feels like reality, but it's almost weird because if I focus too hard mm -hmm. on it, then I can't fly, and it's it, it's like the weirdest feeling because it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be able to fly, and then I try to focus on it and I can't do it. It's weird because I've never achieved like complete lucid dreaming. I, I'm not lucky enough to have like fantastical dreams where I fly and things. Most of my dreams are like 
when I remember them. You know what I mean? Because you dream every night, but it's just whether or not you remember yeah. in the morning. Most of my dreams, I'm all in. I 100% believe it's reality. And, like, they're usually really gritty and dark. Like, they're horrible things. Like, events that could actually happen in my life happen in my dreams that sure. are, like, absolutely horrible. <laughs> So like I don't I don't really have good. Well, that's dreams, what's that's you know what's what I mean? weird too because like like how I said oh of course I can fly like you kind of made fun of that that's why I don't think I've ever achieved lucid dreaming because to I, me it feels yeah. like reality it doesn't feel like a dream but that's obviously a dream thing. Yeah, years ago I got really into the whole idea of lucid dreaming and I like read a bunch of books on it and was like trying to do it really hard like intentionally trying to do it. You know, you have to do Apparently all these things you like, can. yeah, you have to like keep a dream journal so that you know what your dream world yeah. is like, and you have to like set a trigger for yourself and basically try to do it. And it never happened for me, but I have been able to piece together weird aspects of like my dream world through the years. And there's always this city in my so dreams. If it contains a, a boiler room, you're fucked. Really? <laughs> Is that a thing? No, that's Friday Nightmare, the 13th. On, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Right, yeah. yeah. No, so like I've I, there's this city that like r is recurring in my dreams a lot. Like I'll, it will take place within this city where it is almost like Inception, where like gravity is a little skewed because the city exists within a 45 degree angle, but like you know, not it's like tipped point down. And mm -hmm. there is the lower portion of it, the not so nice portion of it is on the start that I usually, the side that I usually start my dream on. And there is, you know, there's a point at the bottom where you can start to climb up to this nicer side of it. And there's a rail system that runs like almost like a cable car that runs up the angle to the other end, but there's also like a series of stairs and uh, moving sidewalk type things that'll take you to the other side of it. And uh, my dreams most of the time take place in the first part of it, the not so nice part of it, but then I'll, some other times I'll be in the other part of it. And it's so weird the way it's laid out that like, I always remember when my dreams take place there and like I could like draw the layout of this city and like, I don't yeah. live in a city. I don't go to cities generally. I don't like them. But for some reason, my dreams will take place within this city a lot. And I don't yeah. know you, why. It's not based in reality. Were you a fan of MC Escher as you were growing up? I was no. a huge fan of MC Escher. I was actually. not. It sounds He's my like favorite some, artist. Yeah, it's, it's very much like something yeah. out of like MC Escher or like I said, Inception, where like the world is like curling over well, on I mean, itself. And like, inspired by do, um, it's really weird. Do you guys, uh, this became a dream episode, but do you guys die in your dreams? Oh, yeah. Like, I, do you wake up when you die? Yep. I don't know That's, that I've ever died in a dream. Because I have never died in a dream. Like, so yeah. many people I've talked to said, oh, when you die, you wake up. I don't think I've ever but died I've in a dream. But I've never died in a dream. It's weird, too, because a lot of my dreams involve me being, like, chased by someone or having to defend myself against someone. And if they actually get me, I just, like, don't die. It's Most weird. I don't wake up. I just don't die. Dreams, like I said, they're very gritty and horrible and realistic to where, like, my dreams will result in not a death, but an absolute emotional breaking point to where I'll wake mm. up. Like, I will die an emotional death in my dreams and then yes. wake up. Like, there'll be yeah. horrible things. Shit. Like, either something horrible has happened to me or I have done something horrible in my yeah. dream. And, like, just I had a dream I got a in a bad accident on the freeway right before I drove down here. Yeah. So hopefully that's not the case when I'm going say, back up to Michigan. I've yeah. been in my dreams I have been shot, stabbed, run over, pushed off cliffs, hit by uh -huh. cars. And usually it's it's that's not surprising. Between two and four, <laughs> He's Jason Voorhees in his dreams. Two and four a.m. Mm -hmm. is usually when that hits. I had the one last night that I had was interrupted before I died, but I I remember it. I was it was like a I was at a convention. And I was watching a panel, and all of a sudden I looked down, and I was just wearing a white shirt, and I was stabbed right below the bottom of my sternum, and it was just bleeding, and I had a big old blossom coming through my shirt, and I just kind of sat there, 
looking at it and I just went back to watching the panel I was at <laughs> and it's like huh that's weird so, not worth missing then, this panel <laughs> no I, I don't even remember what, there was nobody else in the room it was just me mm. it was like I was watching a panel there were chairs all around me there was the tables up front but it was just like as soon as like I realized it I got up walked around came back sat down looked at it again just and then my alarm woke me up at six thirty. what are we at time wise real quick who cares yeah who cares <laughs> Oh, sure. It's the last episode. Who well, cares? no, I just wanted to make sure because I kind of want to bring it back with these stories, but I want to also make sure everyone yeah. gets their well, thoughts in. Well, if, if we're going to start bringing it back, I can go back to the well, shadow let's let people. Let's say what he was the saying. The thing about some uh, like dreams being based in reality is like one of the ones that came a lot in the recent year is that like so like last year when Alicia was going to have brain surgery, I was like what would happen if she died you know and so yeah. that's like been a recurring theme in my dream is like the very real life situation of is, is like is if your if the mother of your children dies how do you explain to your children that they don't have a mom anymore easily and so that's like a recurring theme in my dreams now that i'm like this is the worst thing you know yeah yeah and uh like we started to watch a movie the other night called our friend on amazon prime and we watched the first couple minutes and we we're like nope not tonight because <laughs> the movie and opens with a man and his wife trying to, to discuss how to explain to their children that the mother is going to die Oh, and I was like, nope, I can't do this. Nope. <laughs> because like, I'm just like, man, what if that ever happens? Like, how do you explain to your children that they will not have a mother anymore? Yeah. That's like my, probably my biggest fear is like yeah. just having to deal with that situation. But I don't think I'll ever have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But just the idea of that situation just terrifies me. That's so I won't go into the details of recent dreams, but needless to say, I, at one point, I can't. I don't know if it was a, like, an actual medication, a placebo they were putting me on, or what, I can't even remember the name of it, but, um... In the dream? No, in real life. I don't think anyone's putting you on a placebo in real life, unless you've, <laughs> like, voluntarily the... joined a study. Well, because <laughs> like... the, the medi uh, the, what they claimed the medicine was going to do for me seemed a little fantastical. Okay. Yeah, you it always does. this is your dream, right? No, this is no, this real, life. Oh, this real, is real life. life. Yeah, oh, that's why I God. said I don't think anyone would put you on a placebo. <laughs> well, what they told me the medicine was going to do is it's going to remove the emotional response to dreams. Because oh, you don't that's have... impossible. Exactly. That's why I was like, this seems like a placebo bullshit thing. But they it technically worked because I guess I wanted it to. But because of that, I didn't remember the dreams I was having at that time. Oh. Because... If you don't have an emotional response to it, there's no You're reason not, for it to no form reason, memory. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't sure. stop the dreams, but you don't remember them when you woke up. Mm. Now, I don't know. I mean, this is supposed to be, you know, they were always told it's a, for medication for veterans coming back with PTSD. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they sold it real good. So it worked for me, but it was one of those things that is this a real medication or was I just fed a lot of bullshit? I don't know. But like I said, it worked for me. That's probably why I think most of my dreams are ones that end with me having an absolute emotional breakdown is that because those are the only ones that trigger memories <laughs> is that the horrible ones are the only ones I remember. The well, ones also, as you remember. become, as you get older, a good memory is not a, as, mo as emotionally stirring. Because I got so many. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> I, I, I dream like where you, you know, like when you're a little kid, you have dreams of, you know, I went to the park or whatever. Oh, yeah. But when you're an adult, like, it has to be something fantastical. For oh, it to right. Be a good Fucking memory. no. You'd be surprised at what those dreams were back then. I don't want to. I have know. one dream that I can vividly recall that I had when I was like four. I slaughtered thousands. No. <laughs> rows above. No, it wasn't that. It, if I had to guess, or I, if I had to liken it to something. I was going through what looked to be, I would say it's more Middle Eastern village looking texture wise, because it was all tan, every part of the, like every building I saw, and it rose in a, like, it was all building. Isn't it weird how, how places it, are laid out in dreams? It's all, it was all rising to a singular tall tower yeah. in the middle of this area. Like San Francisco. 
everything is just on a yeah hill. Well, like the dream city <laughs> yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. This wasn't it all. Well, it was to... all as far as I could tell. It was all flat. But I just remember it. It's I don't know why I remember it for years and years and years. I've just never purged it from my memory. But I just remember there was something on a spit rotating above fire that was bright as green just getting roasted alive you killed the aliens maybe but that is just a dream that has stuck with me that you I don't always... know what it was and no idea. The dream and you had no idea what his it was. life's mission is to find and eat that green meat <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. It was roasting it's, on a spit. I must it's find green it. eggs and ham. I just like I can see like from where I was in that dream, Reptilian looking roast. up at it. If from where I was, I was down to the right, probably the about forty Zuckerberg. meters off of. Isn't it center. weird how specific dream directions will be too? Yes. Like I was down into the right. I was down to the right, and years. it was. If I had to, it was probably at like a seventy degrees up from where I was, so it was fairly close. It was just high. And for some reason, that dream has always stuck with me mm. for my whole life. I always, I can you always said, recognize it. You said you had a memory that would bring us back to shadow people. What was oh, that? Oh, I was thinking back to shadow people. Um, like you were talking about how a lot of kids will see them. I'm remembering all the stories of parents with young children, like brand new parents, like babies coming in like, oh, they just had a new one. Somebody walks into the room to check and you get you see a shadow person leaning over like you the crib. open the door uh, and some, one of the worst mm, feelings uh, is looking into a baby monitor I and been, thinking you see someone that's in why the room. i've never had a video baby monitor oh yeah. my god yeah but it was i i remember hearing the stories of dude brand new father had twins to start they were in the same room opposite sides in their cribs and he's like you know what i'm gonna check it they have a night light in their room and he said the night light was in there and there was just a black figure obscuring the light around him. And he you could see the shadow on the floor from this figure. And he said he flipped that love, ran in there and swung, hit nothing. Dude, the, there was nothing there. There's some baby monitor videos out there that'll just terrify you. Yeah. It's have you ever seen the one of the kid that broke in that the one baby, house? And the baby monitor footage is so creepy because it's always it's so, so low grainy. Quality, yeah. Yes. I like the oh, one you normally have with the night filter, like yes. Oh it. my god! Yeah. I always like the one with like the, the baby that, footage. <laughs> that climbs up on the edge of the railing and just stands there like oh, this. Oh, I hate that one. Just T posing. Wait, what is video. it? It's what are you the, talking about? The baby climbs up the edge of the crib and stands the on the, the one night. inch wide railing, just T posing. Like yeah. that, just standing I've there. I've never seen Legit. that. It's oh so my scary. God. And then the baby, it doesn't fall or it climbs back. What is back. it, like a year old or something? Yeah, it's a small, like, toddler looking one. Like just oh, ready enough to enough get to out. support itself to stand, oh, my but God. maybe not walk fully. But it, it climbs up and stands on this very like tight roped like edge. the rail, of yeah, the, the crib. railing of the oh. crib that slides up and down. It got up there, stood on it, and then just was standing there like this. I don't know if there's something to it or if it's just a horror movie trope, but that like babies are in a vulnerable state and that mm. like demons would come after them and try to like inhabit well, it them and on like, the horror movie yeah i don't know if that's a horror movie trope specifically well, or if it's like based in some sort of like uh superstitious reality you know like that oh maybe that's the case so well, like uh but baby annabelle, videos are scary annabelle they established the rule that a demon could only possess somebody that gives their soul yeah. willingly and a child can't do that. Yeah. So Pass that. What the hell was that? <laughs> oh Brian, <laughs> why did you do asshole. that? That came into all of our ears. I know. This, like, I was like, did I just noise. hear a baby? Yeah. I was oh, so scared in that God. moment given <laughs> our conversation. Like <laughs> Oh, shit. This episode Christ, is just like, this me. episode is rough on me because, like, I've got goosebumps yeah, just, and, like, watering I would eyes say this whole time because so this actually... kind of stuff freaks me out. So, while he's looking at that, um, I Googled it. I guess it's not a placebo. It's called Trazodone. Like, that baby is oh, screaming, I've heard of that. man. And in 70% of patients, it reduces nightmares from an average of four times a week down to one time a week. I feel yeah, like so removing so the emotional your... response to nightmares could remove your oh, emotional God. response to everyday life and turn you into sort of a sociopath. I don't know. But yeah, that, that was Trazodone. Huh. Yeah, it, that's a, uh, that slows down your mental capacity. It's terrifying. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a sedative. Yeah. Uh, oh, whatever. Yeah, all the terms. I want to watch it again. Dude, that's weird though. Oh my oh, God, that no. scared the yeah. shit out of okay, me. Okay, I just need the, the clip. That's, Yeah. <laughs> 
The, the, there's so much of that stuff. It's, I forgot so the baby scary. did fall It's weird though because he doesn't stand just like this, like the way you described it. It's he almost, almost looks like, like someone like, held him up to the well, top. Well, not necessarily that he was like reaching towards someone. He was like, like expecting someone to grab him. Yeah, we're talking oh. about the baby video Brian was referring to, and which I... can you stop playing well, that in the microphone, dude? That oh. audio just freaks me I out. Know. Like, what's uh, sad is that's probably not going to clear I have the, the noise like, gate. So this, none of the, the podcast viewers aren't. This whole hear episode, it. I have like involuntary goosebumps and eye watering because like this uh. stuff creeps me out so much that my body is just having a reaction to it. <laughs> Well, uh, just stop God. with that. <laughs> yes. I mean, that baby is screaming. Well, let me let me bring oh, it back to shadow so people terrifying. with these two stories. They're relatively recent. Um, and uh, sorry if you couldn't hear me. These are two stories about shadow people, relatively recent. Uh, they're kind of lengthy word wise, but if you just listen, I think I can get through them relatively quickly. Um. So this one was posted March 11th, but it says last July. So it would have been July 20 or March 11th, March 2011. Um, But it says last July to start. So it would have been July 2010. It says last July I awoke because I thought I heard a rustling sound. When I opened my eyes, there was a dark shrouded in parentheses. It says cloak almost figure standing at the foot of my bed i blinked several times because i thought my vision was cloudy or something from just waking up but as my vision cleared i saw it more clearly it was large and very dark it looked like a large shouldered cloaked man my first thought was the grim reaper i was scared at first but did not feel threatened it moved forward towards my feet at the end of the bed i was waiting to see what it was going to do but it stood there so i said what do you want immediately an intense pressure started on my chest my legs and my arms i felt weighted down i tried to reach out to my husband sleeping next to me but i couldn't move and i also couldn't talk i was uncomfortable but not in pain and not scared for some reason i focused on calmly or i focused on calming myself and thought in my mind what do you want that was when the shadow man grasped my grasped my ankles and pressed what felt like palms of hands down on the tops of my feet pushing my pushing them down uh, until my toes were pointed. Um, so sh- it sounds like she was laying on her back and her feet were kind of pointed up toward the ceiling and they pressed down to where they were kind of pointing horizontal. Um, the pressure on my feet kept intensifying and that is when I started to get scared because the figure seemed to be leaning in closer and closer. I found I could talk and began yelling, something has my feet. My husband woke up and when he saw me, Looking down at my feet, he immediately flung himself to the bottom of the bed. When he did, that figure disappeared, just vanished. My husband says he didn't see anything. The pressure feeling on my feet and chest lingered for a while afterward. The following day, I felt like I had been in an accident. My chest, arms, legs, and feet were sore. I was so disturbed by this that I messaged my best friend and told him about it. I also phoned the doctor and scheduled an appointment. Everything went well at the doctor. I was fine. The shadow figure had visited on a Thursday night. Friday, I had gone to the doctors and messaged my best friend on Saturday. Saturday, late afternoon, my best friend was killed in a car accident. He died from a severed artery, or severed aorta. uh, Severe chest and leg damage had occurred, and his feet, the tops of his shoes, were stuck under the front dash, toes severely pointed. I don't know exactly what that meant. Um, I don't know about you, but I think this was a warning of what was to come. It served a purpose, though, in my mind, because I had spoken to him the day before he died, thinking there was something wrong with my health. I told him how important he was to me and how much I appreciated his friendship. So essentially, she felt that this shadow person or shadow or whatever um, was kind of a forewarning of her friend's death because he pressed on her feet and pointed her toes and she said that for some reason that was a a pretty significant thing about the accident um he had a severed aorta of course which has nothing to do with it but she said that he also had chest and leg damage because she said that she felt a severe pressure on her chest and it felt like people were pressing on her the tops of her feet and she said that the tops of his shoes were stuck under the front dash and her his toes were severely pointed whatever that meant um, so that was kind of interesting because that kind of, and 
to be fair, these are all first person accounts. Anyone can post about anything. They can write anything. There's no way to verify it, but that's what she said. So take it for face value. It's kind of an, a, a, an example of like the foreshadowing and the potential like ominous type of yeah the presence that comes with so, these shadow people. When I think about that, I think about like the we know what sleep paralysis is it's waking up in REM mm -hmm. sleep but there's no explanation for what causes someone to wake up while in that state because generally if you wake up you wake up you mm -hmm. know but waking up but remaining in REM sleep is something that's not really explained mm -hmm. and like we know the effect it has on your body and on your brain to be awake during REM sleep but we don't know why you would wake up in REM sleep and stay in that state and it makes me wonder if there is some kind of supernatural being that has the power to just like freeze you in that state and wake you up and sure you know torture you and the night hag that's kind of how they describe it because uh, it could be described as your mind's personification of what's happening to your body physically mm -hmm. where you you can't move you feel like you can't breathe so it feels like someone's pressing down on your chest and you can't do anything about it yeah but on the flip side it could also be a supernatural being sitting on your chest described as sleep paralysis because it's like oh i'm only imagining this because you know what else could it be mm-hmm so it's kind of like the flip side, you know, which which one of those two could it possibly one be? One of the really scary but also interesting aspects of sleep paralysis is that you can hallucinate because your brain is projecting what it is imagining in the dream world into... Yes. And, like, basically, so your sight is processed by your brain, and so, like, if your brain tells you you're seeing something and your eyes are open, you'll think you're actually seeing it. And a lot of alien abductions have been explained through sleep paralysis. And I watched this documentary on sleep paralysis once where a man described his sleep paralysis experience of he woke up, he was frozen in place, and figures came into his room, grabbed him by the feet, drug him out of his bed, down the stairs, and out of his house. It sounds like a bag. He felt the thump operation. of every stair going down, but he never left his bed. But he could see himself moving through his house because his brain, his dream was that that was happening. And so his brain was making him see that and feel that Yeah, because your brain controls the nervous system and what you perceive that you're seeing and everything like that. So he could actually physically feel himself and see being drugged down the stairs and out of his house, even though he never left his bed. Like, that's so terrifying. Yeah. Like, he has another story, doesn't he? I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, but I wanted to just kind of get the final thoughts before I moved on to the second story. Is it like really good? Uh, I mean, when I, when I read it, it sounded like a decent recent, um, well, by recent posted recently, but it was a 44 year old posting about a, an experience when she was like 11 or 12. Okay. Um, but it sounded cause the first one I chose because it was kind of an example of a foreshadow. The second one I chose for a reason I can't remember because I'm drunk right now, but I know it was good. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Um, but it says, and it's kind of the same where it's like decently long, but as I read it, I think it goes by a little faster. So uh, it says, hello, I'm Andrea or Andrea, however she pronounces it. I'm 44. I saw a shadow person when I was around 11 or 12. This happened in Colorado, USA. I was lying in my bed asleep and woke up suddenly with a bad feeling only to look up towards my window and see a man. And then she puts in parentheses, there's no way to know it was male, but that was my perception immediately, which kind of fit the narrative. Like mm -hmm. there's no real gender, but for some reason, everyone per the perceives it as a male. Um, so uh, kind of without the parentheses, it says, looks towards my window, see a man who is pitch black and had only whites for eyes with no other discernible human features like a nose or ears, just a pitch black silhouette of a human shaped head and shoulders staring at me. What I could see was really only a bust of a man as if he were standing outside my window, but that was impossible. Our house was a split level. My bedroom was on the second floor. No. I'd say my window was at least 25 feet from the ground, and without a ladder, no human being could have been standing there. I was immediately terrified. I still get goosebumps all over if the thought even comes to my mind or if I see an image that resembles it. 
At first, I was too scared to do anything. I thought of asking it what it wanted, but then I thought I didn't want to know. Uh, I could not break eye contact with it. Finally, I decided that I needed to quit acknowledging it, its presence, and with every ounce of will I could muster, I turned my back to it, which terrified me more because I was vulnerable at that point. I laid there back turned for what felt like an eternity, um, but could not have been more than a minute or two, and finally worked up the courage to turn back and see if it was gone, and luckily it was. I sat up and looked out my window immediately trying to find someone climbing down a ladder or running away from the house because it, it had not been long enough that someone should have been able to get away without me seeing them run off. As I said, my window was at least 25 feet above the ground. We had no neighbors behind us, just a wide open field, uh, lots of prairie dogs. Um, there was no way, or I'm sorry, there was no one anywhere in sight, no ladder, no nothing. Um, when I tell people about it, they always say it was a nightmare. It was a dream, but it was not a dream. I was wide awake, startled out of a sleep by a very bad feeling. My heart was beating so fast and hard. You'd think I had been pushing boulders up a hill. This is a person from Colorado. So they have very interesting metaphors. The only nightmare I can recall ever having was of a giant spider sitting on my face. That was it. I dreamed of a spider and I woke up. My dad let me watch the shining when I was seven. I grew up on a horror flicks. I don't have nightmares. Um, to this day, I do not like to sleep with my bed by a window, but I have, um, when I have, I will not look out the window, uh, at night from my bed. So basically it was kind of like what you said with your sister. Yeah, where that very second much floor, reminds me of that story. Yeah, second, second floor, floor window, someone looking at Someone in. looking at you. There's no way someone could have done it without a ladder. This person said that they turn their back, uh, with every bit of will they could muster, Felt like an eternity, but it could have only been maybe one or two minutes. <clears throat> they turned around. That person was gone with enough time to have caught the person if they had run to the window, which she did. And she was expecting to see someone kind of run away with a ladder, um, but she didn't see anyone, any ladder or no nothing <laughs> is basically what she said. So it's kind of interesting with, because it's, yeah. um, I don't know. And she's very certain that she was not asleep. With the story so I told her earlier, well. the, I mean, because that reminds me so much of the story I told her earlier about my sister, and I feel like it's going to be one of those things <clears throat> where I remember that vividly. That sister is going to listen to this, and she's going to be like, who was that? Which one of us was that? And I'll be like, it was you. And then it's going to be like a whole thing, because she's going to be like... <gasps> I do Does she not remember, remember? Oh, that. She... I don't know. We haven't talked about oh, it. Oh, gotcha. But like, I feel like it's you said it was like... one of the older ones. Yeah, the older or the like younger of the two. The younger of the two older ones. Gotcha. And I feel like it's good when <clears throat> I if she listens to this and she hears this, either it's she's gonna remember it or she already does remember it or she's gonna ask me about it and I'm be like, yep, that was you. <laughs> She's gonna be like, I do remember, and it's gonna freak her out. Yeah, that's crazy because that was a long time ago. That would have been in probably 1999. That long ago? Yeah. Really? Maybe How old earlier. Would she have been? God, she. It, it may have she even been, been like eight. It would, may have even been earlier than 99. Oh, that's crazy. Because I, I remember I was quite young at the time. We lived there at that house from 95 to 03. Yeah, because she's the same age as my oldest. Um, yeah. Which is 91 ish. And... I remember at the time yeah. that it happened, you know, we were all pretty young. Yeah, that's crazy. That's really creepy. Um, but that's funny because I chose this one because it was an an example of kind of like the sighting where you actually stare at the person and they don't leave. Um, and I just happened kind of to have a story that yes, falls right you, in line with that. Yes, that's weird. exactly. Yeah. Um, so it worked for that reason, but that's obviously not why I chose it. Uh, but it kind of fit with my story because it was another example of um, staring at it, it not leaving, turning your back to hopefully make it leave because you're not acknowledging it. And apparently for this example, it did leave. Um, but uh, yeah, there was no sign of any potential person kind of peeping. I mean, could you even imagine that type of a person? What kind of a peeping Tom is like into like, I look in people's windows to watch them sleep. Well, not only That's that, weird. not That's only like that, a... but peeping Toms, if you peek at them, are going to get scared and, and run, run immediately. Yeah. They don't just keep staring at you. Yeah. 
Like that's Unless the creepy they're part. Really well, psychotic. Sure, but then like you'll the find... type that would want to watch you sleep. But the, <laughs> like, yeah, but so then you'll creepy. see them running because he... yeah, and, and also and a it's ladder like... would be required. And, and that's also, not an easy thing to take to someone's house quickly. And if a peeping tom is that brave to stare at you in the eye when you're acknowledging them, and you turn around, what's going to make them leave at that point? You Close know what I mean? Blinds. <laughs> Well, yeah, but the, it's Dude. scary. You don't want to go up to the window if someone's literally right yeah, next to the I window. I, I don't. I wouldn't want to look out a window while I'm sleeping <laughs> ever. Yeah, but but it's weird because it's like if it was a if it was a real person, one, what's going to make them leave if you turn around? What's going to make them stay if you stare at them? And two, you would catch them running off if mm. it was only like one minute and they were twenty five feet in the air, like she said. I feel more comfortable sleeping outside in the open than I would sleeping inside looking out a window trying to fall asleep. Blinds are always closed if I'm yeah, same. next to a window. Mm-hmm. And they're closed the up way, like the backwards way. Yeah. So you can't because see, I've, you can't down, yes, down because I've in. noticed, yeah, if you face it inside, they can still peek down at you. Yeah. So I face it the other they. way. They. <laughs> they. Who's the... <laughs> they're the coming for you. Yes. Yeah. That, that's a real feeling, though. I'm like, nope, can't have that. That's so why I all mine are, other that's way. Why <laughs> mine are flipped up. Yes. Uh, yeah. I have that same paranoia where it's like, you can just like. Yes, exactly. I can see you right in there. Yeah. Man, this is probably our creepiest episode <laughs> ever. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, at least to me, like I, I was creeped out. Well, yeah, the thing. it's, it's like funny so because I had no, like, I had no so... personal experiences, but yeah. recounting my younger sister's experiences was really creepy because I, it just brought me back to when she would describe mm. it, and it was creepy. You know what this yeah. reminds me of? Just it was, it was a robot chicken skit, but it's. <laughs> It's, it reminds me of that because it was funny and it, I, it was always one that I liked a lot. But it's a dude, it opens up on a scene of just a bedroom and there's a ghost just sitting in a chair and like to the left of the guy's sleep. And he wakes up and sees it, starts freaking the fuck out. And he's, What do you want? Go away. And the dude slowly just, Okay, I'm going back to sleep now. And he gets back in bed and, go, and the ghost just looks at the camera and goes, What? We're not all assholes and pulls out a newspaper. Just casual. Yeah, he's casual just sitting ghost. there. <clears throat> it just I don't know why it made me think of that which is fair because some people apparently claim that they think that shadow people are kind of watchers I wouldn't and protectors so. which yeah. I don't really get the feeling that they are I mean are, you always hear about them though like, a lot say, of the stories are with hey they're like my kids I, think I saw something like I talked to you about earlier today Victor that like people who would think that like the shadow people are like oh it's like a protector it's a comfortable experience are those type of like hippie type people that are like all spiritual experiences are beautiful and powerful or and the people positive who, or and the like people who deep down know that it's ominous but they are trying to convince themselves mm, that yeah. it's a protector or the type of people that would call a shark attack a shark encounter yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's shark there, week, there's everyone. an effort well, to no, rebrand it's shark, week shark while we're attacks recording. as shark encounters. I still like the idea that if a shark bites you and doesn't finish you off, it's just a snack attack. Snack attack. Because they just kind of even took a bite and left. Just kind of, just, yeah. Just well, that's a little like bit what of snack every single. Ever does that. That's what every single shark attack is. Pretty yeah, much. that's pretty much. I just like to call them. They're leave. just snack attacks. He just wanted to get a taste. He didn't want the whole meal. He yeah. just wanted to uh, get some a sample. Yeah, just wanted to sample. He's it. questioning. Uh, no, um, I don't know if it's the amount of alcohol we've had tonight. Probably not. Or just I'm like highly suggestive to this kind of stuff. Hmm. No, everybody is. It makes everybody uncomfortable to talk about it. Well, that and like <laughs> I keep seeing movement in the window behind oh my God. Victor. No. Well, then I'm turning around. I don't like that thought. <laughs> And I'm the gonna... fact that you can't see out the front of my house. The fluctuations in the shadows behind well, that's, John. Oh, real heavily. That's what's <laughs> creepy, because every time I would talk about shadow people, I had a weird feeling behind me. And I was like, ah, it's yeah, because I'm just talking about it. It's because like, I'm just talking yeah. about it. But then you said that you kept seeing something, and I'm like, well, no. It I'm also gonna, doesn't help that I have ceiling around. fans in every room of my house, which cause constant uh, fluctuations in shadows. Yeah. yeah. Especially, yeah, so I got a window with one cracked blind to so, my immediate right. Anyway, Every time I stretch, I look yeah, out. Yeah, multiple it. times when I'm like trying to listen to, like when I turn my head to listen to Victor, it's like just like a 
it might be that, something it might be that window. bird feeder birdhouse thing it could be that talking there. about them draws them in or it's just, I mean, like I said, I've been having like alcohol or physical and... responses to this conversation to where well, like I've had the... like goosebumps constantly that's and like just watering yeah. rays and like because yeah. this this, this isn't like to be that can literally get you anywhere. Yeah, like that's just the dread that comes with talking about this. Like you remember the night we stayed up till like six a.m. talking about shit and we just yeah. didn't want to fall asleep. That's why we stayed up till the sun yeah. came out. Uh, yeah, everyone's gonna have a great time going to sleep tonight. Oh, I'll sleep like a fucking baby. I'm so exhausted. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think that might be a good place to wrap up on. Unless you, you have more. think so. Have fun, everybody. <laughs>